Hello everybody and welcome back to Valhalla. It's been a couple days. I meant to do more of this sooner, but I had to take care of some stuff the other day and today as well. But we're back and let's just do it. Jill bought what she wanted. I have everything. And I read all this stuff, right? Lilum, li yeah, Lilum receiving mysterious signals. And monster girlfriend, Ch Chirari. Who is that, Lilum? A very good friend. Oh, that's right, Lily. Um, I almost just said Lily. What I meant to say was Dorothy. How'd I get that? Probably as in Lilum. Dorothy was here hugging me all last night. Let's go to work. Friday, December 23rd. We're way past that day now, aren't we? Good evening. Ah, uh, hey. How you feeling? Lilum are soft and warm. Come again? You heard me. So, on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm. A sad pile of shit. I still hate myself, I'm still sad as hell, but how to put it, the noise stopped. I don't know if I explained it myself. Sorta, kinda. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I guess. Huh? I called, Dorothy to I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you, and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second, saying that she had the whole night to go, and she couldn't just leave for free. I asked her how much, and she said, Enough to pay for this soda I'm having is fine. How did you get her number? I have contacts. Right. Anyways, Jill, if you need a second break, a drink, or a hug, just let me know, you hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs from me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. Yes, we do. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it as is. Let me turn it down slightly just for myself here. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Eh, it's nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? Welcome to Val- Oh, it's you guys. Hey, be more respectful. I brought my boss here. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. So, what brings you here today? I wanted to see the place my best soldier is working at. Soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Oh, it's you, Dana. Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana, that's just Jay. So, I'm guessing you're part of this whole Sira thing. Part of it? I founded it! Humans have the best intentions, but they don't- but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. Here we can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on earth. And do you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those Seifer bitches? Of course not. <laughs> I'd include other animals, but sadly I can only take care of those who are of the same species as I. Sad thing is, I'd take him more seriously, but it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Manly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? All right. Manly drink for the dog. Maybe I should just give him something bitter. All right. Bitter and manly. How about pile driver? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four, all mixed. Air. Yes, this is just what I wanted. Ugh, this tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know? You picked a good place to work at, soldier. 
Thanks. Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Sierra afloat will not go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean, we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can Boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though, like the fact that we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool! Every dog has a right to have his own ball. If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait, don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all of her money like water. I mean, what with the bar closing and all that. But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper, a box or balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are. How do you think they ship boxes? Tied together? Tied together? Don't be silly. Unless she's paying him straight from her pocket, boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sorts of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors. Boxes come in boxes. Bottles come in bottles. Ooh, as expected from you, boss. Wait, that theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For all I know, she might just be paying him with stakes. So tomorrow, you're gonna check for people selling boxes, you hear? Sir, yes, sir. Except that to boss, a good stake is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with foil? Russen Strauss had to be taken to the vet because he ate the foil a piece of cheese came in. Curses, you're right. We need a contingency plan. Besides, Boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with the vet those Seifer bastards have. She's always so nice with us. I know, her smile is so cute too. So it's better that we vet for a vet? Yes, put that on the list. Ah, Nacho! Oh yeah, forgot she knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by. I've got some errands to run. Great, Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. All right, Greenhorn, let's get going. <sighs> oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. I just wanted to mess with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? Gil looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's just the kind to just not accept such a thing. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do, and he'd be away from the bar for a bit. When you put it like that... Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice. Glad I'm working with her, too. Yeah. So, you having anything? Actually, I'm just gonna go sit over there and be on standby. Await orders. Okay. Shit, I missed the chance to ask how if or if he even gets paid with money. Man, I sure need to get wasted. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel better. Oh, Sheba! For fuck's sake, you piece of scrap. We just got out of a building full of dogs. But this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. Oh. Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Jill. Get me a beer, will ya? Gotcha. Does Deal want anything? Okay, roll. Sir, yes, sir. So cute. He's fine. Just a beer, then. Friday after work isn't just a beer, though. It's THE beer. Can't argue with that. A beer for Betty. I can make it big for the heck of it. Eh, why not? Let's make it big. I need a drink myself. Um, okay, no, it's just mixed. What am I doing? Okay, I need to move this dang speaker. It's getting in the way of my mouse wire. No, I blended it. Fuck. I can't believe I just did that. Wonderful. Uh, one, two, three, four. Here's your beer. Here, let's make it special. Yeah. Cheers. 
Hey Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with them. I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. No thanks, the last thing I need right now is more crap taking space. So, how are things up at Dogtown? Well, that Laura girl is stirring things up, for better or for worse. For worse? She's, uh, like a rabbit. An overtly politically correct rabbit. R rabbit? Never had a pet rabbit? They're a nervous mess that gets startled over the littlest of things. And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together and holy shit! Poor girl can't even speak properly. She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. She's a nice girl and it's sweet that she tries so hard not to offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't help either. Mm hmm? You randomly yell, what did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well, it's just that. She looks so cute when she's startled. Like a rabbit. It raises up the question of whether she's really like that. Or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How? You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. It's not like you can say no, you know. I mean, it's my honor that's on the line here. I want to prove that you're only talking shit about me. Even if you are right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She's actually she actually reacts when I tease her. You take it in your, you take it in stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. How's that any good? She's cute and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Shit, you're right. I must save my teasing for when the moment is just right then. No, that's not the problem. It is for me. Not Betty. You are a character. And what are you doing here? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. By the way, he said his name was... Say, this Laura girl, do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as, as co-workers at the very least. What kind of girl is she, aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing? Slow. She's the kind that doesn't she's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slowly. Really, really slowly. That's a bad habit to get into. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff she does a great job, but it's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building though, she's more like a freelancer. Why is she there then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like you're saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. Okay, bad example. May I say something? By all means. <laughs> if that Laura girl is really as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um... A more assertive person? Lilum, uh... A more assertive partner. Yo, piece of scrap. She's totally calling you a pussy. <laughs> she totally is. She's right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then, you'd be under underestimating the power of love. Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people, for better or for worse. Who knows, maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. I guess that's a possibility too. Still, why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? Because she's like a cute rabbit, so someone might try to eat her out there. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. 
Ugh, why not see if she likes you and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? <laughs> you make me sound like some sort of skirt chaser. She's not into girls. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Of course you did. She seemed giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. It was weird. Wow. Even nowadays, I don't know how someone could be freaked out about that. Or be amazed of, of seeing, seeing a lesbian. It was weird. Okay, enough Laura for a night. That... Refrain from using that's what the la you said last night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. Give me a fringe weaver. All right. Let's make one bloom light and one fringe weaver. All right. Bloom light. Bloom light. Delhide. That, two of these, oh, three of these, and all aged and on the rocks and mixed. Bloom light, and a fringe weaver, fringe weaver, fringe weaver, by name F, one of these, and just go for nine of these. All aged and mixed. Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. Seems it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made them drink all the bloom. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? Not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of the re because of a relationship, Jill? In more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for better or for worse? I guess for the better. I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although, thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So you were one. Of, ugh, so you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became more... It, what's the word? Cynical? Jaded? Bitter? Tired of this crap this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis? Hey. I'm just quoting you. Ugh, but yeah, I think I became all that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. How is that bad? We'd all go and protest, we'd start all kinds of movements to see things changed. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone was willing to go that far. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of, their, because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. The internet in a nutshell. So I moved from group to group only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were the dangerous extremist kind. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after that. I can see that. Why, Betty could be, yeah, I can see how Betty could be so bitter about everything when finding a lot of people around you are pretty fake. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather other people. Um... You seriously never thought about it that way. Uh... You need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever. Where's the other guy, by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Oh yeah, the one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works at the Seifer Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something. Why didn't he do it then? I don't know. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? The pay from the dogs isn't enough to keep up with the mounting debts. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. But this is coming from someone working at a place that pays a dog for doing fuck all. 
Or at least I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well, we're fine, but we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I really mean her. She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand to hear another had to go to a picnic with a hangover story. <laughs> fine! Let's go then. See ya, Jill. Bye. Those two are great friends. Please come again. Man, you are such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'll take my break. Call me if someone comes. All right. Fantastical bartender action continues right now. No dogs in sight. All right, let's mix it up a little. And just that, let's go. It did it again. It did it again, it never... There's like a glitch that's been happening lately. It keeps skipping the, the first song I put. Whatever. Okay then, back to work. Welcome to Valhalla, oh, hey there, Alma. Um, uh... She seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer up. Oh, 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 right, right, this part. Hang on a second. I didn't open up the, the wiki before I started recording. Valhalla endings. I forgot to do that. Endings Valhalla, okay. Alma's thing. I should have this memorized by now, but I don't. I just want to make sure I do it right. Serve Alma what she wants when she asks for a classy drink. Later in the game, when she is feeling down and needs to pick me up, serve her another Brantini. All right. I'm gonna give her the bad touch. One, two, three, four, five, six. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes is, yeah, the Brantini. All aged and mixed. There you go, girl. Hey. Huh? This? It's on me. Drink, so we at least change. So you at least change your expression. Why not just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? Yeah. So how is it? A Brantini, so you do pay attention to what I ask for. You have quite the fixation with Brantinis. To be honest, they suit you. Hey, wanna hear a silly story? Always. When I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate, just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he looked like my sugar daddy. <laughs> what? It was a fun night. We pretended at times we were dating, I managed to blow off some steam about my mom, but the highlight was him ordering a Brantini for me. I've had plenty of drinks and gotten wasted many times since I was 15, but that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk. The drink itself was the pleasure. He too said they suited me somehow. Oh? Ever since that day, he's called me Brantini Girl from time to time. Your dad sounds like a cool guy. You should meet him sometime. So, why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. Eh. So what is it? Was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Al Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, that's old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. So, go ahead. Unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so remember my sister Dayana. The one that separated from her husbands and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something. Perfect summary, I'll use it next time. <laughs> I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. 
And I mean that. She never see, she never seen... <sighs> Talk right, Christian. Shape up. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So, what does this fully capable woman do after do a couple of weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot steamy nights and left. I, I, well... Huh, he reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get some money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days, she left her kids with my parents. And being such a sweet angels, they made a mess of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give them some space. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all the built-up tension, I just exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. I started scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's in no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Yeah, you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first, barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting the guy that hits me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Eva and Bernardo, and they've turned out pretty damn well. I don't have any kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Damn. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I love my family and I put them above all else. But Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Any way I could help? He just did. Eh? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell though and I just couldn't discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get all of this off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. Now, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs was Eva. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my mother's side of the family. My father's sisters still look quite young, but when menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had any problems with that. Oh, I see. Hey, uh, you know what worries me the most about the whole Dayana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her. Somehow. Actually, what worries me is, what if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man and I settle down, what if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is an indication enough that you'll be fine. Sound advice, Jill. Sound advice. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that you, she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are kind of those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. 
Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey. Am I lying? Nope, but there are things best kept as unspoken truths. I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? Hmm. Get me something with ice, but alcoholic, please. All right. Cold and with alcohol. The Brantini isn't like that, right? No, it's not on the rocks. Hang on a second now. So, I've pretty much done everything Alma to get Alma's ending. I just have to continue to give her whatever she asked for. So, okay. With alcohol. Uh, girly drinks. Nah, let's just keep going until I see something. Okay, on the rocks and has alcohol. On the rocks. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One. Why did I go to that one? I meant to go to the green one. Brain fart. Three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two. All on the rocks, and oh, did I not hit it? Oh, I may have made it again, right. Here you go. Thanks, I needed to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So, you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? Don't think too much about it. Oh, come on, you heard my problems, I want to help you too. Don't worry too much. Right, I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You wanna come? Sure, something tells me this mega Christmas is gonna be a mess at my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Hmm, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want, it won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hey, say Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? I guess I like legs the most. Really, I like breasts better. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have a better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs, and a lot less messy. Hmm, you silly girls. Boss? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best part are the wings. Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where did you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken, the shop two blocks from here? Sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because, uh, thought as much. Yo, Armitage. I still don't know if I'm saying that right. I've probably been corrected multiple times, but whatever. Alma. I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might need to heat it up, but it'd be cooked otherwise. Great. I expect you here Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back in my office. She left the bucket. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. Weird, maybe she got a mixed order and that's why she left them here. She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. What about you? I like them well-dressed. If they go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, well-coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. Some muscle is always fine, too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my men. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. 
What do I get ya? Anything, as long as it helps me with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay, let's give her something to help her get over the spiciness of the wings. I guess something with more ice? Uh... Hang on. I'm just double checking. Nope, this doesn't matter. I'm just... I'm just paranoid I'll mess things up. All on the rocks and blended. Let it mix. Here. Phew, it helped. Thanks. All right, so next question. What kind of girl do you like? Uh, hmm? Y y you first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but... Nope, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit, just calm down. I, I, I guess I like girls with light-colored hair. Light-colored hair. Y yeah, you know, like redheads and such. What about white, like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just that when she got here with the bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. Uh, so, light-colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment. I would never let you go. Hmm. <laughs> okay then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty these last days? What? Oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill, you heard my problem so many times, I want to help you. Come on, come here. Yeah. I told you to sit here, come on. What? What are you... All right then, now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly, the bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay then, I move this here, click, click. Click, click here and... Now it works for you, for me, and the dog, and the Hawaiian shirt. Why with him, too? He's a dog in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right, and how did you even manage to... Oh, yeah, hacker, right. Now we've changed roles. Did anyone else notice the bunny symbol in the, in the middle there? Wonder what that means. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty, mind telling me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Okay, then. It's something that goes back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelashes su ugh. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave more credits. I really liked her, and after some time, I found out she liked me too. Ooh. We started going out. I met a, I met all of her family even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink! Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending inter interface. Ugh, a sugar rush, then. You can't mess that up. Right. Jill asked for a sugar rush. How does this thing work again? To a Delhide, one powdered delta, all mixed. No alcohol, she's on the job. 
Air. Thanks. Voice crack. Ugh. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hmm. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know. People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've, ob you've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when I try to move around this kind of stuff. So, keep telling me the story. Ugh. Well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session. Investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech, and suddenly while reading, the se reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that, so I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I had only gone through the motions, day after day, from high school to graduating. I, I felt like the whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped and realized I needed a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all of my strength to not start running like a panicked mess. Uh, so a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenore was ecstatic. She was proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things devolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things, and I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. Sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Eh? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to the bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it, wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we, we were together? I don't know, I just feel like all kinds of failure. Jill. And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yeah, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but... She's just a kid for fuck's sake. She lost her sister who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride, fear, a stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. I honestly don't know what to say. I, I didn't expect the story to be this. I... Yo, boob tender. Y yeah? Can you get me a big beer here? Coming right up. A, a big, big beer, big beer. What makes a beer big in this thing? I know. Alma didn't get a tutorial, though, so it's not fair. She's a hacker. She should know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a big beer. Big beer for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? 
One of the perks of the BTC-issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. What? They're, they're, they issue you a liver implant? Uh, that's weird. Oh. Hey, Jill, what kind of girl was Lenore? Hmm? Well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now. Shut up, I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't, it's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time, I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All of that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenore would always present me to many of her acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but... She was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now... Ah... Uh, you know, when a cruel twist of fate... She's the one that made me pick up bartending. I don't know how I said fate instead of irony, but all right. Oh? Back when I was thinking about what the hell to do with my life, I remembered a night we spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synth uh, synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating, I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said if everything else fails, why not just take up bartending? Huh, interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Thank me? I guess I just needed someone to tell all this to, and you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, but I'm not one to sput love and fluffiness, but I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client. But I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Jill, are you dying? Shut up. I'm trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just... It's weird for you to get so... sappy. Well, I just realized what the saddest thing is, is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know. I never, and I mean never, want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any cost, and if it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all my courage, and can be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this, hate it, hate it! Heh, that's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. Alright, enough sappiness, get back here. I'm on duty, you know? Fine! I'm almost... <laughs> it's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I, I, I mean it, you know? Thanks for everything today. Silly Jill, you listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know, I just... I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly, they're your parents, they live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime, they'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That Alma girl sure is nice. Ah, boss, did you hear all that? 
Not all of it, but a good chunk, at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss, about those chicken wings. Fucking idiots at the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana, we don't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat their regulars? <laughs> Call the manager. Boss? Cherish Titty Hacker. She's a good friend. And have $300. Zero mistakes. It's how I roll. Jill's power didn't get cut. This gives her peace of mind and she'll focus that work of no problem. There goes a lot of my money. Model Warrior Julianne Returns. This February. The classic magical girl show Modern Model Warrior Julianne is coming back to public television this February after almost two decades of absence. Even though the show has been on air... Even though the show has been on every on-demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City citizens need to think twice before subscribing to any non-essential service, especially the lower class who have a limited number of internet purchases per year. The show's return is certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood with their kids without risking dinner or breakfast. <laughs> is that a tear in your eye? N no. Nano machine rejection has taken 80 lives this year. The Health Observatory has released their annual report on nano machine rejection. The total number of reported cases has risen to 80, an increase from the 65 cases reported last year. Nano machine pollution was particularly strong this year due to the recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police force to release new varieties, new varieties of nano machines. Their function is still unclear, but according to our source, they're intended for crowd control. It's unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future. We can only hope cases like these will be rare, become rare in the following years. I wonder if she's among those 80. Update. Lilum receiving mysterious messages by Lana Smithy. It looks like we were able to record and transcribe one of the messages sent from the compromised signals. Joe Wren, the anchor from our popular TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. White noise. Who are you? Are you really alive? You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. End of transmission. Spooky. Or a made-up story. And now we get to... Alright, just one. Grand Slam Fighters. Is anyone into wrestling here? I became a huge fan of GSF very recently. It's a really solid product, in my opinion. Much better than the E. I like the match quality, but I wish they gave importance to the mid-card. Are they still forcing 66 American Kid into the main event? Yep, he's going to face Yusuke at the Dome Show. Ugh, why don't they push the great DK instead? He's much more talented than 66, because American Kid actually moves merch, unlike your indie darling. I want to marry Yusuke, who's hyped for the Women's Championship. That one should be the main event, not the turret we're getting instead. 66 is pretty good, just watch some of his work in Japan. Everyone tells me 66 was better in Japan, but all I see are... All I see is locks and armbars. Nothing that impressive. Wrestling is fake. Amazing, how did I know all the words and yet I understand nothing? Alright. Making a little save here. And let's just jump into the next day. Ah, uh, hey, Jill. How are you feeling? I won't say good, but not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Where's Gil? Did you run away again? Nah, I have him on errand duty, buying the drinks for tomorrow. That sounds weird, coming from the owner of a, of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of our own funds. So if we're gonna spend money, we might as well get more variety. Besides, those kinds of walks are always good for Gil. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us, the dogs you invited, Titty Hacker. Gil, invi Gil invited Jamie. Oh yeah, I also invited Dorothy when I called her to spend the night with you. Sounds good so far. Invite anyone else you feel like inviting. The more, the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. 
That's true. I'll be in my office. Call me should anything arise. All right. All right, let's get ready to roll. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Wait here, I'll check inside. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, a BTC bar. Excuse me, do you know where the uh, Athena Convention Center is? Why does that place make people get lost so easily? They should have called it the Minotaur Center. Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Go to the right, when you see a building filled with hobos, this should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm, yeah, what the hell, I'll have a drink. What about you? Um, a Brantini, please. Right, the girl asked for a Brantini. The little um, freaks me out. Oopsie. That wasn't the one I wanted to click. I wanna give her a Brantini. Three, just one, all aged and mixed. Here you are. Thanks. That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, Miss Vela. Well, I'm actually cosplaying, so call me Vela for the time being. And your little friend is Essentia. I get it. You're cosplaying too. Sure, let's go with that. Have you heard of a game called Yeek Bartender? That cult classic game that has seen like three remastered versions made by six different companies this year? That one. We're in a cosplay group dedicated to it and we got lost on the way. I heard you were talking to someone outside. Oh yeah, a friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told him to wait outside. Shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. S something amiss? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, black sailor uniform, missing an arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. Now, now, don't spook the bartender. Spook? Ahem. Anything else? I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? I'm fine. Villa asked for a fluffy dream. The little um still freaks me out. All right, fluffy dream coming right up. Sounds like it's made of candy. Three, one, two, three. All aged and mixed. Fluffy dream time, here. Yep, this is the thing. Seriously though, you should leave your friend outside like that. Should you leave your friend outside like that? Blah. He'll be fine. He started chatting with one of the vending machines. They were talking about R&B music. Does your friend prefer the 1980s R&B or the 1970s? 1980s, I think. Oh, shit. Boss! Dee Dee! R&B! I'm coming! Um, you see, Dee Dee is a 1970s purist. He has, t he has tased people for even liking 1980s R&B before. He got tased! Ugh. Oh god. He'll be fine. Vending machines have very weak tasers. He'll be confused for a couple of minutes, but that will be that. You should go check on him, though. Right, thanks again for the directions. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just in my head picturing a vending machine tasing someone over such a trivial reason. <laughs> That's just a very funny thought. Right, thanks again for the directions. And also, I think you all noticed, Essentia there seems to have, seems to be aware of Anna. Please come again. Uh, at least it, at least it wasn't Franco-Belgian comic opinions this time. Black sailor uniform, hope I'm just overthinking it. More importantly though, jeans under a skirt. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hey, Dorothy. Oh, oh, hi, honey. There she is. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. Can Lilum just wander? Can I get you something? Oh, a, a sugar rush. Yeah, that. Right. Dorothy seems down. She asked for a sugar rush, but hasn't she told me about a drink that cheers her up? Hello, Wiki, my old friend. If, say, comes to the bar. 
Let's see. When Dorothy is feeling down or wants you to guess her favorite drink, serve a piano woman. I remembered that, but I just want to be sure because I don't want to have to spend like 30 minutes clicking through dialogue just to, just to, when I find out I, I messed up, you know? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two powder delta. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, all aged and mixed. Piano Woman, there you go. This is, didn't you say you liked having a Piano Woman whenever you felt like celebrating or were feeling down? I did? Wait, I did? He actually remembered such a thing. Oh my God, she's so happy. It's gonna stick the finger in the mouth. I don't think I've ever seen that expression on her before. You're so sweet. I was half expecting her to say that she meant a literal piano woman. Glad I was wrong. <laughs> She's so happy. I can't get over that. By the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. Turns out I really needed that. So did you enjoy the soda? Oh, did you find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, but don't go around telling everyone about that. I did it because it was you who needed my help, but a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. It is? Hey, I don't know if the client has body odor or something like that. Not to mention it limits the chances of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped me cool down a lot. So, from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? Yeah. Do you want to know more about it? Do you want to tell me about it? I've brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem, then. You were sad, and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss, though. I mean it. Thanks. Although I have wondered for a while, do you, Lilum, really understand death? Sorta. Kinda. Our whole database is constantly being backed up in the collective source. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. So, our concept of mortality might be different. We do have a fear of death, though. You do? We can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea of that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do fear death and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, there was the argument used... This was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing. You seem quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Seriously though, those laws were bullshit. Can't harm humans, can't disobey humans, unless it's about hurting them? And you can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. But how could those laws still apply to them after they achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide by only rules inscribed in some old book? <laughs> oh! Dorothy! If only you knew. And obviously that's what the writing's going for right now. If I remember correctly, those were only the distilled versions of the law some writer imagined a hundred years ago. They were a reduced version of all his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took to them like they were the very laws of physics or something. And like many other things, people distill and exaggerate what they need and use it for their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. Mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know? It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute. What was his name again? Four. Why four? I figured if he ever got lost, at least I wanted to be able to yell, Four! It happened once. You'd be surprised how many golf players you run into. And every time you play with them, you can just say it's foreplay. Hee hee hee. Hey, yeah. 
He was also named after someone. Really? Who? A little kid that wanted to transcend. What, a movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Do you want anything else? Well, let's see if you know me that well. Give me something I'd like. Okay, then. What would Dorothy order? She'd order another piano woman, I guess. Yeah, I want you to guess her favorite drink server, a piano woman. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. All Asian mix. Um, oh, I'm, I'm starting to notice it. Right now, Jesus. Uh, beer. Oh, I'm starting to feel a lot of breath. I guess it was running around earlier today a little more than I thought. Ugh. Let me just... Get over that for a second. Here. Good, but that's cheating. You just served me this drink. Still right, isn't it? Yep. I still can't believe you actually remembered what I said about the piano woman. Finger in the mouth. Boop. She's so happy. It's cute! It's always good to keep note of what regulars like, you know? I've wondered for a while, though. Why do you keep coming back here? For you, of course. Come again? Why else would I come if not to see you? You're one of the few people willing to hear me out, always filled with curiosity. And you're cute. Talking to cute people is always nice. I agree. There's also the bar, the way it's ins insulated from the noise of the city. It's really comfortable. And it's just a bit away from the street I'm always at. A win-win situation. I see. It was weird to see you down, though, especially since you're always so lively. Well, I wasn't down, really. I was just thinking about a lot of things. Like what? Well, my mom or guardian asked me to go home on Monday for a bit. And as much as I love her, being with her is unusually... is usually tiring. Guardian? That whole thing about someone taking care of a Lilum after they're deployed until they reach maturity, right? Yep, and I'm proud to say that that I reached the psychological maturity in just one year. They always try and keep a varied pool of volunteers to make the collective source grow faster. So, what's wrong with your guardian? Well, she still treats me like a kid. The worst part is that sometimes I fear she might see me as some sort of replacement for her dead daughter. Huh. Dead daughter? I was deployed to her not long after she lost her daughter. A contrived coincidence, coincidence, really. Even when I was still developing self-awareness, I always feared she might be using me as a replacement. She didn't, though, or at least not consciously. At times, she would just stop doing something or return a gift she's given me. And she felt like she was projecting too much on her daughter... If she felt like she was projecting too much of her daughter onto me. What irony that years later I'd make a living pretending to be someone else in the bedroom. How's that? Well, most of the time my job involves role-playing. A daughter, a, d a student, some helpless kid. It means I've gotten many clients looking, ex looking exactly for that. But on the other hand, from a professional standpoint, I'd rather have them hire me because of me. Because of my character, not because I'm the one that roles play. I'm the I'm the one that role plays as little girls. Maybe I need to exaggerate some attributes. What's the problem with your guardian then? If you do that on a daily basis, why worry about it? Because I don't want to make her sad. Every time I visit her, I fear she might look at me and see her daughter. That seeing me makes me sa makes her sad. At this point, I don't even care if she's projecting her daughter onto me. I just don't want to make her feel sad. Did you try talking with her? How so? Telling her just what you said to me. Clear up those fears. I mean, unless she's not the kind to want anyone opening up to, up, opening up to her, that is. I never really thought about talking to her about that. 
It does sound like something you just. It doesn't sound like something you just bring up, though. Keep in mind, at least. Maybe she'll appreciate the gesture. Gesture. I wouldn't know, though. I haven't met her. She's a really nice woman. The problem is mostly with me, I think. Well, then, I'm taking my break. Oh, I'll be leaving, then. No, what I was trying to say is that I'm taking my break. You want to come? Really? If you don't mind talking on a chilly night in an alley behind the bar, that is. Eh, I've done worse in alleys. Let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. All right. Yay. Break time. Save the game. Boop. Boop. It's now safe to keep playing. But I have the controller. Or mouse, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, new scene with Dorothy, because I guessed her drink. Want one? Are you really offering a little girl a cigarette? Now you're a little girl. I always am. Innocence, however, is another matter entirely. But anyway, thanks, no. Smoking seriously messes my air filters, and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me, though. Smoke to your heart's content. Thanks. So, why don't you tell me about this guardian of yours? I want to know what kind of woman she is. Sure. Well, her name is Sophia Graham. Oh. Oh. I, oh, I see. I see. Well, her name is Sophia Graham. G Graham? She's a retired PE teacher. Nowadays, she works at a gym during the morning shift. She's pretty fit, if I do say so myself. She had a daughter. Apparently, she suffered from nanomachine rejection all her life. When she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Um, what was her daughter's name? I don't know. I never asked, really. Are you okay? I'm reading fear. Or is that surprise? It's hard to tell. I I'm, I'm fine. Wait, read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with a combination of body heat readings, face recognition, and context. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you sure you're fine? Yeah, yeah. Scared or surprised, she's not wrong, though. Wait, does that mean your last name isn't really Hayes? Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic, and that's what people usually look for in this business. I tried other names, though. Dolores Hayes, Genesis Graham. I tried Dorothy Warrior once, but a legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. <laughs> what? <laughs> so what's your legal name, then? Rebecca Dorothy, Rebecca Dorothy Willow Graham. A bit of a mou mouthful, if you ask me. Yeah, so much of a mouthful that I can't even say it right. So Dorothy's actually your second name. Should I call you something like Becky, then? People have always called me Dorothy rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I, cho that's why I chose it. It's useful, too. People have tried to falsify stuff using my name, and they always get caught. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name. Yep. Only my mom, or guardian, calls me Rebecca, so it's weird to hear it from others. I feel the same way, and like, in that, like, my name is Christian, but only my mom and grandma call me Chris, and I only tolerate it from them. I, 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 I correct everyone else who tries to call me Chris. Except my mom, just because it's my mom and grandma. Anyways, what about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as a last name. Shortly after I joined their household, they separated, so I was left with his family name first. Hold on, so your real name in short would be Rebecca Willow. Doesn't have the same pizzazz if you ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Stop it. It'd be like if I called you Julianne all of a sudden. <clears throat> Ahem. Whoa, that was anger I read from you. Lots of anger. I think it's weird enough already if you call me Jill instead of Honey. Weird, huh? I can end up feeling associated with a name that's not yours. I have an uncle that always called me Tina. 
He kept calling my cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Huh? Neither of us mind it, though, because he's calling us when he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That, and it's completely useless to try and correct him. But you know, maybe that effect is true for your clients, too. How so? Well, if you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're... you, right? But think about what happens when it's announced that a character will be played by a different actor. Sure, it's a character, but people are also going for the actor playing the character. So you're saying they go for my roleplay instead of just some mere roleplay? Sounds too far-fetched? Sounds plausible, actually. Okay, honey, I'll take my leave now. Don't want to take up all your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. I need to remember to buy more cigars. Ah, just let it go as it is. Back, did I miss something? Unless you count the worst PPV main e event fight I've seen all year. No, really, no. All right, botch that too. Going out? I'll have a word with Gogo -Go outside. He was so hyped for that match, he must have been de devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Say. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? The nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. Ahem. Um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely, my wounds finally closed, the scars itch a bit, though. Well, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yep, I'm running a couple of errands by myself. But I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Buster? Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested taking him with me. I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. Something cold for say, all right. Eh, sure, this one. Three, one, two, three, one, two. All blended. Here. Yeah, this is the one. I drink something cold when the weather outside is cold, too. It's not that cold, actually. But I've always had decent tolerance for the cold, so I'm a good ref. So I'm not a good reference. So Stella isn't with you today. She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow and is having a meeting today. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to a party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that. Can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time. If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. I want you to know that I want you to have a good time. Have fun, drink a couple of beers in our honor. Eh, I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? Oh, they're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food though. So at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children of her staff members. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Ella. Eh. Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party and she'll most likely celebrate it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Jill? I don't mind them, they're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend, though. I just don't mind going to them. I see. I only go to parties that Stella is attending, because otherwise I'd just stand there without anything to say. That end, I'm not one to wear dresses, you know? You're not? I'm a tad too ripped. They don't look cute on me. Although with all this healing I have to do, I won't be as fit for a while. They're too, um, breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. But I bet you would look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. 
Last time I wore one, I remember worrying my arms were too thin or something like that. We all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. She distress. She distresses a lot about her bus size. Really? She's not that small. I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Uh, again, I, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Although I guess comparisons are useless here, they really rarely help with complexes. Well, she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've seen her before and after she tucks them away, but I guess I never cared enough to ask, ask the specifics. That's also why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um... Drills? They look a bit drilly, don't they? She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. She seems affluent enough. Why not go through the reduction surgery? Because she also kind of likes having that size. She takes her bus size after her mom, and Miss Carmine is very proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Stella has quite the admiration for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her. Huh. I'm making it sound like she's hiding J-cups or something like that. I guess in a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter or thinner than the norm. Do you get self-conscious about your bus size, Jill? Not really. I've been more self-conscious about my height. Although it usually comes up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes and no. It's not my bus size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. And I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help with that. You're fine, don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. Do you have something non-alcoholic? I do, give me a sec. Something non-alcoholic, uh-huh. Okay. That has alcohol in it. That's a spark, simple sparkle star. Let's go something fancier. Eh, that was a sunshine cloud. One, two, all on the rocks and blended. Come on. Blend. Here. Thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? It makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least makes my legs go numb. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy even when you're not. Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? Can't say I'm one for alcohol myself, much say. That's a good question, actually. Usually people feel like feeling numb because their numbness helps them forget their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food. Or who are suffering from pain that only, uh, uh, that only alleviates when drunk or high. It doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Yeah, I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. Ahem. There's also a matter of addiction, you know? You start just liking the drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know it, you're hooked. Yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy, it'll just be me, Boss, Gil, and a couple of regulars. We'll bring food, we'll chat for a while, and that's it. That sounds fun. At least better than the whole planning madness Stella is throwing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Hey, say. Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna check one last errand before going home. No, no, I mean, what do you plan on doing now with the White Knights disbanded and all? To be honest, I don't know. 
I never prepared a plan B because I figured if you can't, if you can go with a plan B, why not just make it the plan A? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. And I'm tired of blatant corruption. Sick of it. Oh. But I'm alive. Hmm? I learned something after that hell in Apollo Trust. Life is not something you can just throw away easily. Clawing my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in the bank was ridiculous, but I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm alive. I'll figure it out sooner or later. And that's nice to know. Well, gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Mr. Detective. Ah, uh, hey there, girl. Give me a strong drink, won't you? All right, something strong for Mr. Detective. Something manly, huh? Spicy, manly, strong. Sounds right. Two, three, four, five, six. One powder delta. One, two. One, two, three, four. All blended. There you go. There you go. Yeah, this'll do. So what brought you here? Nothing special, I was just working on a case and I happened to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone, a gun for hire. What about the girl, Crimson something? I am tracking that girl. Didn't you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered a huge amount of money and well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder, though, there has to be more to that whole thing than just acting as a middleman to look for some murderer. Say, how safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws, the walls are soundproof, and I really couldn't give less of a shit about selling info to anyone. Okay, then. Wait, soundproof walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? They're quite talkative, the bastards. It'd be annoying without those walls. All right, then. Have you heard of the Lord, Lord Lance Lavender? Nope. He's some big name from Kanyevania. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to Glitch City's nanomachines. Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nanomachines will initiate a reaction. Essentially, they'll just eat through the other person's body until there's nothing left. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes that reaction and if it could be used to fight nanomachine rejection. Uh-huh. Turns out the Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to earn her living here and hasn't been seen ever since. He could be lying, you know? Doubt it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract, and tracking all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Eh, what about a Cobalt Velvet? Okay. Cobalt Velvet for Mr. Detective. Okay. Two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. All on the rocks and mixed. Here you are. Oh, you, you actually did it. Were you expecting me to mess up so you didn't have to pay? N no, no. So what made you accept the contract anyway? Keeping in mind all the risk you told me last time. He told me he wanted to see her again one last time, or at the very least deliver her a message. He could have been lying. Yep, people lie. You made your point. Even then, I felt like I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like not being able to find your daughter. What it's like to be apart from her. Not knowing what she's doing or even if she's alright. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, we had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to show up. Then I started getting worried and went out to find her. Couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody had seen her. Soon I was worried if something might have happened to her. I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of contacts begin to grow. I finally found her, taking cover in some dumpster, unconscious from starvation. 
So yeah, I just couldn't say no to his request of finding his daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. So how's the search going? I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to her, to the her from before the bag incident, she seems slower though. Either she's let her, either she's let her guard down, or something else is happening. What will you do when you find her? I have this letter I'm supposed to deliver to her. I don't know what it says, and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? I might not look it, but I can take care of myself, bartender. You don't stay so long in this business without picking up a couple of tricks. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I better go back to work before a trail goes cold. Please come again. I wonder how that guy's relationship with his daughter is now. Did, it did everything work out when he found her? I don't think that's ever answered. Are you done? Yeah. Okay then, I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. No working beforehand, the bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dressed in your absolute best. We're having a party after all. All right. Where's Gil, by the way? He stored all of our things in his home because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home already and bring the stuff tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on, wait a bit and I'll go with you. Oh, sure, thanks. Yay! I know this small party is what you needed. It's Mega Christmas. Let us celebrate everything. Party then? I'll bring you leftovers. Okay, well, uh, hold the thing to unlock. Do we got stuff to read? Yes, we do. But, hang on a second. It's day 13. How far does the game go? Up to day 18. Alright. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. I think it's getting increasingly more apparent. Um, fuck. I've kind of been developing some breathing issues as I've been doing this episode. I was a bit more tired out from today than I thought. I mean, it doesn't matter if I do Christmas now or next episode. It's, it's not exactly timely anymore. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye. And yes, I know I'll read the stuff later. I'm just... I kind of really kind of want to take a break right now. I might... Actually, I want to grab my inhaler. Anyways, and thanks again, and bye bye.